Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from Middle Discourses 85. Uh, title of the discourse is With Prince Bodhi, uh, Bodhi Raja Kumara Sutta is also, it's no, also known by that. Link to the discourse is given in the description. Okay, so in, in this discourse, the context is that there, Buddha was staying at the land of the Bhagas and uh, there was a state longhouse named Pink Lotus that had been constructed by constructed for Prince Bodhi and Prince Bodhi uh, basically uh, asked his uh, 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 student Sanjika Putta to go to the Buddha and uh, ask him to come to uh, request him to come to for a meal and which Buddha consented and then uh, Bodhi basically uh, there is this thing that Bodhi said that uh, Prince Bodhi, because uh, he was following the Jain doctrine. Uh, so he said that, uh, Sir, this is what I think, pleasure is not gained through pleasure, pleasure is gained through pain, right? Which is the basically the Jain doctrine that was prevailing, that you give yourself more and more pain, and that is how you get the pleasure. So Buddha had always refuted that doctrine, that it is not like that. In many of the discourses he has said that, but here Buddha then talks about this, the whole story of his uh, journey of awakening, that he uh, told to the uh, Prince Bodhi and uh, uh, so he basically said that he went to the various teachers there is this thing about meeting the teachers Alara Kamala and Udakka and who did not uh, able, was not, were not able to take him beyond the point so then he did extreme practices the same thing that what Prince Bodhi is saying that pleasure is gained through pain so he stopped eating food and then he gave a lot of pain to the body and he realized the fallacy of those practices and then he sat under the Bodhi tree, got enlightened. Then there's this thing about he didn't want to teach because he, he thought that it was, it will be very cumbersome for people to learn. And then Brahma came and then he, uh, he, 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 he convinced Buddha that you should teach because there will be ears who will understand your teaching. And then he said, who I should teach? Then there are Alara Kamala and Uddhatta, uh, his previous two teachers. He thought that I should teach them. Uh, basically, they were not his teachers per se. Because Buddha realizes whatever he realized through his own. But he said, let me give the knowledge that I have got to them. But he came to know that they have expired. So he went to Varanasi near Deer Park, Isipatana, where he taught the Dhamma to the five monks. So all that, you know, he and then he talked about his enlightenment, where he got the three knowledges, the four, knowledge of the uh, four noble truths and everything. Now, this entire thing I have covered in the... Uh, in the earlier discourse that is MN26, Middle Discourses 26, uh, it's a 26 minute video where I have discussed this whole thing because it is same appearing in MN26 also. So I have covered that there. So I'm just like kind of giving it briefly here. If you want to know the whole thing, it's very interesting. You can just type in the search bar MN26 on this channel and you'll come to that MN26 and you can um, go through that particular video. right? So then basically in this video, uh, uh, sorry, in this discourse, uh, uh, Buddha is actually talking about five factors. He said, so, so uh, the question of Prince Bodhi was, Sir, when a mendicant has realized one as the trainer, how long would it take for them to realize the supreme end? Right? So that's the question that, okay, I will do the practice, but tell me how long it will take. So Buddha, so Buddha said, uh, first he gave the analogy of an elephant and all uh, which I am skipping for this merit, uh, for this video you can read it at your end but basically he came came to this thing that there are five factors that support meditation now when you talk about meditation it actually includes spiritual practice there are basically five factors that support spiritual practices now what five number one is when a noble disciple has faith in the realized one's awakening that blessed one is a perfect fully awakened Buddha accomplished in knowledge and conduct holy, knower of the world, supreme guide for those who wish to train, teacher of gods and humans, awakened, blessed. So that is the first prerequisite. You have to have full, complete faith in the holy realized one's awakening. If you don't, don't have faith, if you still have doubt, then how will you, you know, grasp the teaching in a good way? That is the faith in the realized one. Second, they are rarely ill or unwell. Their stomach digests well, being neither too hot nor too cold, but just right and fit for meditation. So, see, if you are not well, if your stomach is not good or if you are not feeling well, you will not be able to go down, go deep in meditation. So, that is why, friends, it is very, very important for us to start our practice right away when our health is good. So, you are like, if you are reading 
watching this video you are 20 30 40 even 50 even 60 see wherever you are if your health is good start your practice right now because buddha said you can only practice well if your health is well right so that's why and death is fast approaching death can come anytime so whatever merit we can gain whatever practice we can establish in this life can help us propel us to continue the practice in our future lives otherwise if we do not do the work here when we have the time maybe we don't get an opportunity in the next life right so best use that opportunity right now so second is they are rarely ill or unwell stomach digests well third they are not devious or deceitful if you are devious or deceitful then no so they reveal themselves honestly to the teacher on the sensible spiritual companions fourth they live with energy or so motivation you should be motivated to learn otherwise well, why will you come to the teachings read the buddha's teachings right they live with their energy roused up for giving up unskillful qualities and embracing the skillful qualities they are strong staunchly vigorous not slacking off when it comes to developing so not lazy they have energy roused up they are motivated fifth is they are wise they have the wisdom of arising and passing away which is noble penetrative and leads to the complete ending of suffering so they are wise they have the noble the penetrative wisdom to see that everything is impermanent everything is just arising and falling away these are the five factors that support meditation and now coming to this precise question of how much time it will take so buddha says when a mendicant with these five factors that support meditation has the realized one as trainer right and understand this we all have the realized one as our trainer even though buddha is not physically there he is there with each breath that we take mindfully buddha is there with us right so understand buddha is there with us we have to just cultivate these five factors in us right and then buddha said they could realize the supreme end of the spiritual path in seven years then buddha said let alone seven years they could realize in six years five years four years three years two years even as little as one year let alone one year when the mendicant with the five factors has realized one as their trainer they could realize in seven months six months five four three two one one month even one day let alone one day when the mendicant with these five factors has support that support meditation has the realized one as their trainer they could be instructed in the evening and achieve distinction in the morning or be instructed in the morning and achieve distinction in the evening that is how even a quick a realization can be and this is actually has has appeared to happen in in many of the discourses where a person just by listening that one particular some discourse of the buddha something like and the best example for this is kodanna kodanna the one of the five ascetics who heard when buddha was speaking the first discourse the first discourse of turning the wheel of the dhamma dhamma chakra pavatana sutta when he was giving that discourse by the end of the discourse buddha buddha said kodanna you have realized kodanna realized awakening there and then right so see friends what we bring with us is lot of definitely the negative tendencies also but lot of positive tendencies you don't know what sadhana or what work you have done in the past that has brought to you in the buddha's teaching for example if you are watching the video right now there is something that has you know you have done the work under the buddha you followed the buddha's teaching from many previous lives which is brought to you so don't think that you know oh it will take a lot of time there can be something that can just spring up in you because of the all the accumulated the merit that you have accumulated in terms of your practice in past lives or from the generosity that you have done so just be in the practice follow the teachings be in a sangha right have been a spiritual community of friends keep your practice going right okay so so prince bodhi was very very happy that this is such a powerful teaching that somebody can be instructed in the morning and he can be instruct uh, he can uh, be uh, 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 totally free by the evening this is how powerful the teaching can be so so his brahmin student was there who because he thought that you no know, now he is so excited he'll go for the refuge to the buddha so sanjika sanjika putta the student of prince bodhi he said do buddha both buddha speaks like this uh, don't go for refuge right now he says don't say like this my mother when she was pregnant she went up to the buddha and she told me that when she went up to the buddha she asked for me to be given a refuge 
So I'm already, I have taken a refuge. Second, when I was staying in the land of Bhagas, the nurse carrying me on her hip went to the Buddha board and asked for the refuge to be given to the child. Then also I, I got, and this is the now the third time that I go to the refuge to the Buddha. So that is how it ended. So it's a wonderful kind of a discourse, very simple, clear discourse on what we have to keep ourselves healthy, uh, devote ourselves, have that faith in, our, in, in the realized one, keep our practices, right? So I hope this was useful. Do share your insights, learnings in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya.